we are ready, but this is going to be one of the biggest ones to ever hit our country. The wall of water is still underneath this storm. You may be in danger. This is a big storm. Yeah, I'm worried about this one. I'm worried about the flood. Take the mandatory evacuations very seriously. It's probably not going to be survivable out here. It's unpredictable, really. We need to get out of here. We do expect up to three million to be out of power. They're trying to send the signal that there is nothing left to stay for. Disaster is at the doorstep and it's coming in. Specifically, the doorstep of the U.S. Southeast as Hurricane Florence approached on Thursday. It is not the only storm swirling in the world. In the western Pacific, Super Typhoon Mangkut was bearing down on part of the Philippines. Mangkut had already caused damage on the U.S. island of Guam, where this video came from. And as the week went on, it strengthened as the equivalent of a Category 5 hurricane, the most powerful classification in terms of wind speed, and the northern Philippines was bracing for a direct hit. More than 4 million people are in its direct path as it approaches the island of Luzon. In the U.S., government forecasters expect Hurricane Florence to officially make landfall when the center of its eye passes over land on Friday afternoon at the earliest. The storm weakened a little yesterday to Category 2 status with maximum sustained wind speeds of between 96 and 110 miles per hour. But Florence is also a big storm, with hurricane force winds covering an area of more than 15,000 square miles. And North Carolina's governor said its storm surge, the rise in seawater that a hurricane pushes ashore, could be between 9 and 13 feet. Ahead of the storm, CNN's John Berman was in part of North Carolina to discuss how the storm surge could affect the area. Days and days of this, I have to tell you, I am just feeling the first wind gusts that feel like they mean business. Here on Oak Island, there's a mandatory evacuation order. Some 8,000 people live here, I was just told by the mayor. About 500 remain. Why have they been told to leave? So much fear over storm surge. This dune that I'm standing on right now, it can withstand a three-foot storm surge. Higher than that, the water will flow over it. Beyond that, I want you to take a look at these houses. Some of them are on stilts. Yes, they are built up high to withstand some storm surge, but there's Allie Hedges, my producer. She's 5'3", with her arm raised. That's maybe 7 feet max. The storm surge here could be 9 feet tall, which means the waters will wash right into these houses and even on stilts. Some of those stilts will not be able to withstand the power of the storm surge that is expected up and down the Carolina coast. To make matters worse, Hurricane Florence is moving slowly. One meteorologist says it could dump 10 trillion gallons of rainfall on North Carolina alone. What could that do to rivers that are already flooding? But you can see that this is a curb. We're on a road. I don't know if you can see how high up this water is already. Behind me here, this is a park, a public park. There are swing sets that are now starting to go underwater here, and we have not experienced the bulk of the rain that we are supposed to get. If you come out here, this is the reason why. Look out there. That is the Noose River. It kind of converges in Craven County with the Pemlico Sound, which creates this perfect storm, if you will, for severe flooding in the Craven County area. New Bern, North Carolina, uh, Harlow, North Carolina, Moorhead City, North Carolina. If I can get uh, my photographer for Mark to pan over this way actually right here and you can start to see some of the uh, boats and the docks are going underwater right now as well. I mean, I'm almost six feet tall and this is already up to my knees of water and we're waiting for the rain to start setting in. The worst part of all about all of this for people here in New Bern is the fact that they're worried about the back end, that dirty back end of the hurricane, but also because this Noose River spills back out into the ocean, all of the flooding that happens in Inland, that a Hurricane Florence is going to bring into all of this water here into the inland part of North Carolina, the flood they're worried about. This water here is going to come back out and likely reflood the area at the end of the hurricane once most people have gone away. So they're worried about a double effect here. 10 second trivia. What do macaws, parakeets, and lovebirds have in common? Are they all native to India, cockatoos, easily tamed, or parrots? The one thing on this list that all of these birds have in common is that they're parrots. One species, the Spix's macaw, a native of Brazil, recently enjoyed 15 minutes of fame after a character based on the bird starred in the movies Rio and Rio 2. Bad news for Blue, though. 
A study released this week by the conservation group BirdLife International found that the Spix's macaw is now extinct in the wild. To be clear, this doesn't mean this species has gone the way of the dodo. The report says that dozens of Spix's macaws are still alive in captivity. But as far as spotting one in its natural habitat goes, researchers say you can't do it. And they blame deforestation, the clearing of forest or trees, for the bird's disappearance. Deforestation is common in Brazil as areas are cleared for farmland, pasture land, and logging, but it's also endangered a wide range of plant and animal species there, apparently including the Spix's macaw. There are breeding programs that keep this rare parent species around for people to see. A retired American pilot recently donated his pressure suit, flight helmet, and boots to an education center in Kansas. Now you might be thinking, what kind of pilot who's not an astronaut would need that kind of equipment? The answer is the kind who fly this. An airplane that was literally faster than a speeding bullet and that could fly as high as 16 miles above the Earth. All these years later, this airplane is still, as far as the record books go, the fastest airplane. Development began in the late 1950s, and the airplane first flew in the early 1960s. This airplane in particular to me is awesome because it is the world absolute speed record holder. On July 28th of 1976, this airplane was piloted to a speed of 2,193 miles per hour. The M1 rifle of World War II fame, which had a muzzle velocity of about 2,800 feet per second. RSR-71 would have blasted by that bullet at 400 feet per second, which is a speed that's just hard to comprehend. But this airplane carried two people. It could take off and land under its own power. It, it could be refueled in flight, although it had to slow down for that. It carried cameras and other sensors that allowed it to provide important intelligence. And so it was just a, a really amazing airplane. And this was 1950s, 1960s technology. This is long before the computer design capabilities that we have today. The SR-71 was retired because it was very expensive to operate. And by the 1990s, it had been flying for going on 30 years. When the SR-71s retired, certainly the United States lost a capability. Yes, there were satellites, there was the U-2, there were aircraft like the Global Hawk, but there's nothing like having an airplane with the unique capabilities of the SR-71 that could fly so high and so fast that is, is still a world record holder today, still captures people's interest and curiosity. It's called the U.S. Sand Sculpting Challenge and Dimensional Art Exposition. And it's the reason why, for three days in the late summer, the Californian city of San Diego is known as San Diego. World master sand sculptors come in from all over the world to do this. The sculptures are made out of quarry sand because it's apparently easier to work with than beach sand. And some of the sculptures weigh more than 10 tons each. 60,000 bucks in prize money is at stake. Could you call them sand dollars? It takes more than a grain of talent to earn it, and it takes more than an hourglass with some serious quartz movement to sculpture a work that rocks. All of them make waves, even if they're ultimately a wash. I'm Carl Azuz, and Fridays are awesome. Next week, we are gonna start our coverage of the upcoming US midterm election, so please come on back then. <laughs>